What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, we're in Unity today. Um, if you've been following along with the VR art tutorials, thank you so much, and uh, those will be back soon. But I wanted to share some other important news, and that is that I've actually been working on making a game um, for a couple reasons. First of all, I figure if I'm going to keep calling my channel Prodigia Games, eventually I'm going to have to make something. But also, I've been working on getting into game development in a more professional capacity. And while I've had some experience putting together mechanics and, and coding and everything, I think the best way to show that you know that you're capable of doing that is to be able to show that you have a holistic view of game development and, and that you have a capacity to do that in a bigger sense. So what I'm going to do is make a game, uh, long story short, it's going to be a rhythm game in kind of the, the tone and spirit of, if you ever played the PS2 game Guitaru Man, uh, but set in a high fantasy setting. So a solid core gameplay loop with, you know, a rhythm-based game, but also with that very quirky, very self-referential sense of humor. So we'll talk about that in the future, but what I wanted to talk about today, real quick, was actually the core game architecture. Um, one of the things that it's hard to find really effective tutorials on is kind of game flow and uh, how to manage, you know, your game in its entirety. And there's a lot of different ways to do it, and a lot of them have their merits. But a lot of people will recommend things like uh, enums, stuff like that. I wanted to do everything based on scriptable objects and scriptable object-based events. Uh, the reason for this is, I mean, anybody who uses them knows you've got kind of a couple of different advantages, but kind of key among them is that when you predefine everything, you can work a lot more in the editor and not so much in your code, which is it saves you a headache because whenever you go into code, uh, there's always a chance you're gonna break something and you just have to take more time to fix it. So if you can get it set up in a solid way, then all you gotta do is start dragging and dropping stuff in the manager, which is great. Um, also, it's a lot of stuff is predefined, so it tends to be a little lighter weight when it comes to runtime. Um, so just all that kind of stuff. Um, so I wanted to talk about how this particular project is set up. Now. Uh, we've got the game manager. What we have is kind of a layer of managers. And the, the interesting thing with this one is these are not singletons. Uh, they are defined in the core game scene. Uh, and every scene is going to be loaded on top of this one. And every scene is going to have its own prefabs and everything, but there's not going to be any more instances of these particular ones. And the reason for this is uh, it just makes things easier because we never have to load new things. You don't have to worry about connections between things when everything is just pulling data. So uh, the way that this basically works at its core is that let's go for an example rather than talking in the abstract sense. But when the game starts, the state manager sees, hey, there's no game state. And the core gameplay, the core uh, loop of this is a state machine. So there's, it always needs to be doing something. So if there's no state, that means it just started. So the state manager will go ahead and call the menu state. And what's cool about this is the UI manager, the state manager, none of them know anything about each other. But what happens is the state manager says, it basically broadcasts an event and it says, hey, I'm calling out that I'm setting the menu state. And then everything that listens for the state update for example, the UI manager. The UI manager will hear that update and it says, hey, it's calling the menu. This is what I need to do when that happens. So let's talk about what happens when that state's called. In the menu, this is probably the most extensive because I've done some UI stuff already, but what happens is when it hears that that state has been changed and that game state, it, it basically it passes the event and the game state that it's calling then if it's not the main menu or the pause menu, it doesn't do anything. But if it is one of them, then it says, hey, let's bring in a menu. And if it's the main menu, it swaps to the main menu. And the way that that works is that if there's no active canvas, if there is no menu yet, it'll call menu, which will be the main menu. And we'll go into the UI a little bit later because that's kind of its own beast, but that's what at its core is happening is that it says, hey, it called the main menu state, so I'm going to load the main menu. Now what should happen is that the menu manager should be set, should be calling the next state. There should be no state called if the menu's still up. But if it does, 
it's actually calling to purge the menu. Because if it says, hey, now it's time for a cutscene, you know, for example, let's say if you have a timer and you're on the main menu and you, you want it to time out and start, you know, just like a demo scene like they would do in kind of the older games often. Okay, if it calls the cutscene state, then it'll say, hey, purge the menu. So that's what's cool is that none of these know anything about each other. But when the state is changed, then it automatically updates. So just to give you, you know, kind of a, an active example, let's go ahead and run play mode. And the game state, the state manager is invoking the game state menu state, and it loads. And then we have all of these. Again, we'll talk about those probably in one of the coming episodes. But you've got all these nested menus that do, you know, whatever the button event is set to, which is also a scriptable object-based event. It's just super easy, super lightweight, and once it's set up, dead simple to extend. So now in the case, you know, you can see that it's calling these different menu item collections, which are the menu screens. And then if you load new game, the game manager is requesting change to cutscene. And then it invokes the game state for cutscene state, and the menu purges. So that's really at its core what it's doing. Now there's going to be more complexity coming, obviously, because we have to talk about what happens when the cutscene is loaded, or when we go into the active gameplay mode. But what's cool is that it's all basically a variation on this. And so for example, when the cutscene loads, we're going to have a scriptable object that'll tell you what level we're playing, and so it'll tell you what cutscene is coming. Um, and it's the same thing, is that it will listen for that event, and if it calls the cutscene state, then it'll, it'll say, hey, I'm up. And then when the cutscene is done, it will trigger an event saying, hey, start gameplay. So it's just a really convenient way to do it. It's kind of uh, convoluted to set up, and a lot of things are very abstract. You have to not think in terms of, you know, I'm making it do this, but rather just telling it, hey, this is what you need to do, and there's where you're going to get the data that you're using. So uh, I, this is kind of a little bit abstract and a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit heady for uh, the, the beginning, but game architecture is always going to be a little bit of an abstract thing up until you start looking at how to populate it and how to set it up. So if this is useful to you, if any of this is um, something that you would be interested in setting up but you don't know how to do it, um, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. If there's something that I can address, if there's something that I can tell you more about, I would be happy to do it. Otherwise, um, we're going to have some more VR art tutorials coming up because we're going to be making the assets for this game in our VR art development. So it's going to be kind of a synergy, which will be great. And then we'll also talk more about how to set up the coding for your game, how to set up this scriptable, scriptable object system, game flow, all that kind of goodness. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep being awesome, keep making awesome stuff.